Alright guys, welcome back to the Celestial Invitational. I'm D2, with me is Monk. And after that thrilling series between Firebat and Life Coach, we now have the two Chinese players of the group, uh, the two people who qualified for this event, that being Zoro and Blue. You, pro you guys probably know Zoro from the World Championships, Blue, maybe a little bit less known. Uh, what do you think about this match, Monk? Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. There's a lot of really different um, philosophies about Hearthstone between the West and the East, and one of the main ones is um, with Priest. In the Western scene, unless your name is Zeta Lot, you probably favor Dragon Priest over Control Priest, whereas uh, compared to that, Control Priest is almost universally favored over Dragon Priest in the Chinese scene. So I expect uh, if we see Priest in the following match, which I believe there are, um, then I expect a lot of control priests, which is always exciting because you don't really get to see that much of it in tournaments. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have been casting a lot of the Chinese matches as we do see Zoro on the screen there. And uh, typically in, you know, at least Team League, the Hearthstone Team League, or Hearthstone Team Story, excuse me, uh, that's going on in China right now. I believe they're actually playing right now, I believe. Uh, but um, yeah. Control Priest is about, I would say, 60-40 over, um, I mean, not not matchup-wise, but uh, about 60% of the time it would be Control Priest, and then 40% of the time would be Dragon Priest. Uh, we do see, it is going to be Dragon Priest, actually, coming up from Zoro. He is the priest, uh, the player playing the priest in this, um, this matchup. No priest on the side of blue. So taking a look at this, um, priest, Dragon Priest with uh, Dr. Boom in there, with that extra oomph. Uh, as well as the Rogue, which looks like a standard Oil Rogue with the Assassin's Blade. And uh, finally we have a Patron Warrior. And looks somewhat standard, except it has a Gnomish Inventor and mm -hmm. a Shield Block. Yeah. Um, the Dragon Priest, the one like odd card in it, I think is the Dragon King Sorcerer. It was in a lot of um, like the first Dragon Priest decks, but... These days, it feels like it's mostly been cut out of every single one um, in favor of stuff like uh, Brand Bronzebeard or maybe Zombie Chows or maybe another threat like um, like maybe Vulgin, for instance, or Sylvanas or Dr. Boom. Um, just kind of, I would even call it a, kind of an outdated card. Yeah, I mean, I can see the reason for putting it in. I do enjoy that card myself for the extra consistency of having that dragon for the buffs. We are going to be looking at Blue, who is on the team Big 3, by the way. And uh, looks like his shaman is... Uh, 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 I've control shaman, Yeah, I I'll, I'll talk about this in a, in a bit. Uh, I think I've seen this before. So we have the Reno Warlock, and then finally we have... Uh, looks like a face hunter. Uh, with with brave archers, brave archers, archers being so brave. Uh, as far as this shaman goes, um, I saw this in the Hearthstone team story, and what it's trying to do is uh, just in the conquest format, you just need to win once, right? And uh, a lot of times, people are scrambling to find a way to have shaman pick up a win because it was so weak for so long. At least until recently, where you know the aggro decks have been working pretty well, though. As we saw today, that didn't work out too well either. But, um, yeah, it, so what players did was either they brought out a super aggressive Shaman, tried to sneak a win that way, maybe they put Kazan in their decks to try to get a free, you know, Freeze Mage win. But um, this deck I saw, I think, last week, and what it's trying to do is just stay alive and hope that his big threats uh, aren't answered for uh, with, you know, things like Hysera. And you're able to stay alive using things like Healing Wave to kind of stay in the game. So, yeah, just a control shaman, just trying to find a way to, you know, sneak a win uh, by preventing your, by bringing a deck that has minions that your opponent maybe won't be able to have an answer for. Yeah, we saw in the last few, in the last match at least, shaman did really struggle to get wins back there, so it might not be um, too far much of a stretch where, like, you just build your shaman deck to only counter one specific deck and it looks like um, this deck in particular it's going to counter maybe priest and warrior just a lot of the big control decks yeah it, it can definitely kill something uh, like for instance this dragon priest which can run out of options um, and in uh, trying to finish out the game you know obviously the dragon priest is not a very good uh, matchup against the Control Warrior, for instance. So, it'll be interesting to see how this matchup goes. 
Uh, especially because, you know, the Control Shaman, complete polar opposite from the Face Hunter uh, that he's playing as well. As And then you have also thrown under the Reno Luck. So just uh, kind of all over the place with these decks. We have uh, six different decks in this particular matchup, which isn't too surprising, actually, given that they have to play all nine decks throughout, uh, nine classes, excuse me, throughout uh, this round robin. Uh, both players are in studio, by the way, as you can see. And it looks like we're going to be getting into game one. Zoro with that Patron Warrior, Blue with his Reno Lock. Yeah, um, I definitely like that Zoro is bringing the Patron Warrior here. Um, generally, I was when I was researching all the Chinese players who qualified for BlizzCon, I saw that they all like to play Patron Warrior. They kind of played like this show match in um, in China after they qualified for BlizzCon. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about, D2? Um, I think it was a, a training camp kind of thing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, training camp with like all the Koreans and some Taiwanese players as well. And in those matches, they pretty much all brought Patron Warrior. So it definitely seems like um, they really respect the deck. And it's showing that right now where Zoro, he's bringing Patron Warrior yet again. We've also, like, even though it's not been very popular on ladder, we've seen Patron Warrior very heavily represented in tournaments. Oskaka, who won BlizzCon, he brought Patron Warrior to his lineup. Uh, Purple, who won DreamHack just last week, um, just over this weekend actually, um, he brought Patron Warrior in his lineup. So it's uh, still a very strong tournament deck. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, strong in tournaments and strong on ladder as well. Um, I mean, I was able to get Legend with uh, Patron Warrior this year as well. So if you ever want to climb the ladder, guys, uh, <laughs> you know, just go back to Patron. It's still pretty good. But uh, interesting matchup we see so far. Uh, Patron, by the way... Uh, as good as it is, it, excuse me. As good as it is, if it, if I can use words here, um, it's pretty bad matchup against the Reno Lock uh, because Reno Lock has the Hellfire and the Shadow Flame, and uh, on top of that, it also has potentially something like Twisting Other. Though I didn't get to see if that was in the deck, but um, on top of that, they have massive healing. So if ever you know you kind of push for damage with the Patron Warrior, just kind of uh, just trying to you know. YOLO it, go all in, and hopefully your opponent doesn't have an answer. Uh, even if they don't have an answer, they probably have Reno. So, yeah, it's, it's a pretty tough matchup all, all around for the Patron Warrior here. Yeah, um, well, what usually happens when, let's say, you get a board of Patrons, and then it gets Hellfired. Um, if, if the Patron Warrior goes for our second round of Patrons, what options does the Reno Warlock have to clear the second wave off? Well, they have um, the Shadow Flame. They also have. I mean, they can also sometimes take the options that uh, Control Warrior has to do uh, here and there, which is to just kind of deal with a piecemeal. You know, Owl, Dark Bomb, uh, do stuff like that. So maybe put a big guy on the board. Uh, I mean, pa the uh, Patron Warrior doesn't always have the ability to keep, um, you know, ref refilling their Patron board. And it certainly doesn't have the ability, and sometimes it doesn't have the ability to use charge as well. And part of the, the reason why the old patron was so good at making new patrons was because of the ability to charge into new things, uh, whereas that isn't the case uh, right now. So you really have to use things out of hand in order to remake your patrons, and sometimes you just run out of resources to be able to just do that. Mm. Zoras has a. Pretty tough, yeah. Pretty tough decision ahead of him. Um, I think he's definitely eyeing the patron in his hand, but I think you do it. I think I mean we see that uh, blue has hellfire, but um, I mean it's pretty hard to win this matchup without taking some sort of risk. And I feel like you get yeah. the patron out as fast as possible and hope he doesn't have uh, one of the two AOEs that he might have. But it looks like yeah, he's gonna this... go for probably battle rage. Yeah, this is kind of the more sustainable play and also still puts a threat on the field. Maybe Zoro is thinking, mm. hey, like this Frothing Berserker is going to be 3 health. Maybe I can bait out um, the Hellfire here. Yeah, really a uh, good point there. I mean, Blue, um, he could look at this and see a huge threat on the board and go for uh, that Hellfire here. Sorry about the lag again, guys. Uh, we are piggybacking on the Chinese stream, off Tiddler's stream in particular, so... Uh, sometimes we have these lag spikes. Uh, in any case, after this battle rage, looks like another frothing berserker with the uh, shredder and the shield block comes in the hand. And blue has an interesting decision here. Doesn't have the ability to BGH that quite yet. So 
Will he expend in Hellfire here? Um, or will he expend an L? Yet another resource that is typically pretty valuable uh, against the patron ward because they typically run two shredders. Yeah, definitely. So it could be an issue uh, going forth. Um, he could, you know, just play his own Dr. Boom and say, you know, what, deal with it. But uh, if that gets, you know, executed, you could be in a bit of trouble. So, uh, you know, he gets a pretty solid minion onto the board here. I kind of like this. Now Zoro has to deal with this first before he's able to play his own stuff, uh, which takes a bit of mana to do so. So then, you know, kind of blue, blue kind of gets the initiative from here on out, uh, which is good for him. Or at least these next couple turns. Right. Um, if he does clear, this seems to be... Is this the best order with the Fiery War Axe? Maybe you can uh, hit it with the Axe first? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean... Okay. Assuming you I think, don't... Sorry, go ahead. I think this gives you the most total health, but the other way gives you one more armor, which is probably rest less relevant. Uh, unfortunately, there seems to be a slight disconnect problem. Yeah, if you go with the Fire of War X first, then you can't hit your Frothing Berserker in before the Armorsmith, and then you can't get the armor from the Armorsmith. So, and considering he did probably doesn't have Shield Block, or sorry, Shield Slam, uh, this ends up being the best overall. But it uh, looks like, yeah, we have some issues. And uh, we are uh, looking at... Oh, this uh, is... I think we are, this, we are reconnecting. Okay. Are we in the Spectator's Mode perspective right now, or Blue's perspective? Uh, it does look to be, I want to say, Blue's perspective. Um, although it might have switched around. Hmm. Well, it looks like uh, the Frothing Berserker was killed off, as well as the Armor Smith into the Owl. So now all you have to do is wait for uh, Zoro to potentially clean this up with the Fire War X. Uh, it looks like the lag is the stream lag this time, instead of the actual game lag. Uh... But we are getting back into it. Who do you think is favored in this position? I know it's a bit hard to call, but who would you bet your money on? The hand with like the full patron hand, or the slightly smaller hand from blue, but one that's reduced by Emperor Thorzen? I say by far blue. I say by far the arena luck. It's just, I mean, they're kind of in a neutral spot, right? Um, maybe... You know, maybe the patrons had a slightly better start, but it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because Blue is in no danger of dying anytime soon. He's no in, he's not in any immediate danger, and his deck is just uh, is just has a far superior matchup in the situation. So, so I think what happened was Zoro lagged out and he didn't get to finish his turn. Obviously, um, otherwise he definitely would have cleared the Sylvanas and he would have played minions on the board. Um, I don't believe he used any mana on on the last turn that he got, so mm. this is definitely looking to be a regame. Yeah, I think I would be a bit uh, disappointed if I were blue there, just because you have the guaranteed Hellfire uh, in hand for the patrons, and that's kind of the only way you really lose the matchup. Um, I mean, there's a couple other ways. Maybe they get some other you know mid-range minions like the Shredder on the board, and for some reason you don't have any answers, which is unlikely, but it could happen. But uh, overall, the biggest way, the, the best way that the patron has is to play the patrons on the board and just hope that your opponent doesn't have an answer. And then from there, uh, you use all those bodies to uh, push for damage. But, um, I mean, no matter what happens, Blue is going to be favored, so I don't think he's too upset. We'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, but yeah, as always, he could always not draw into that Hellfire. He could not get a really amazing Emperor Thor's in play. Um, and it's really typical that Patron, if it gets like a good draw with Acolyte and it gets a Whirlwind into Battle Rage, like what um, Zoro did in the previous game, um, he just goes off. Like I felt like Zoro, despite Blue having a really good hand, Zoro also had a pretty above-average hand slash above-average turns, getting Death Spite. Um, exactly right on curve and getting a great battle rage. You don't you typically get that every single game. Yeah, so like you said, I mean, pretty pretty decent uh, spots for them as far as what they're able to accomplish up to that point. And uh, in that situation, I think the favor deck does win. Um, but uh, yeah, we will see if they're able to address those issues. Uh, if you guys are wondering, I do not know who the 
Kester is now on the left side. They they cycled through. Actually, I believe the guy in the middle was on the left earlier. He was he, he was in BlizzCon last year, right? I believe. Oh yeah, he does look pretty familiar. Um, um, or 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 we just might be being racist here. No, I'm pretty sure he has a distinct <laughs> face. But then yeah, after that we had uh, Fualver, and then after that we had Tom. So. Um, Looks like they're having players come in and and uh, help cast with the Chinese stream. Maybe they can uh, have Kalenta go up there as well. I believe uh, they. Uh, I received information that only Life Coach, Firebat, Dog, and Tice uh, didn't make the trip to China. Everyone else did. That being Kalento, Eloise, Sander, and Tom. Six hundred two to nine. We obviously saw Ta, Tom on the screen earlier, so that'd be kind of yeah. fun if we saw Kalento on the screen. Right. So for most of them, it's kind of like a hop and a skip away from China. Um, um, just Kalento, it's kind of a far trip, especially for um, a Ukrainian. Um, although I do believe he got a pretty long visa the last time he was in China. Maybe that that long visa is still going, and he's just kind of like he just goes back. He's, he he never left. Basically. He never left China. <laughs> um, that would be pretty funny. In any case, uh, while we're waiting, we might as well update you guys. Uh, if you are not caught up, if you uh, just arrived to the stream, the rules for this is that we have a four-man group, that being uh, Firebat, Zoro, Life Coach, and Blue, and they we play a round robin, and they have to bring all nine classes, right? So if they have three classes for one match, they can't use those any of those three classes for the next match, and it resulted in some really interesting. Uh, games, particularly when Life Coach had to play the aggressive Shaman in the last match. Uh, we are on series number four, so we are halfway through the day. And uh, after Zoro versus Blue here, we have Firebat versus Blue in the next match, and rounding out our day will be Zoro versus Life Coach. Yeah, so still pretty good matches along the way. Um, this is the only match that doesn't feature a popular Western player, either Firebat or a life coach. And uh, kind of ironically, it's having the most technical issues, even though there are no like connections from Europe or from America to China. Um, sometimes, you know, the, the servers do act up a bit, and it's uh, out of our control, really. Yeah, def definitely things can happen, especially with uh, China having a completely separate server that Westerners have no access to. Although, I... Are they on that server today? I, I, actually, how do they have these matches? Do you know? Are they on the Chinese server or are they on some other server? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure they're on the Chinese server, and um, all the foreign players are given accounts okay. on the servers. Okay, uh, and they're able to access them in the, their respective countries. That's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see in the coming days as well to uh, you know see how the rest of the players do. Uh, you know, Clento, Eloise, uh, Surrender, Tom six hundred two to nine, Tice and Dog. Uh, some of the other players in the other players who qualified uh, are very interesting too. Uh, that's not one another thing that we need to clarify. If you weren't here earlier for that explanation, is that eight of the players are invited, uh, the ones I just mentioned, and eight of the players have uh, qualified and have qualified either by being invited to the qualifier and winning, or qualifying for the qualifier and winning that. And Doro actually qualified for this before he qualified for BlizzCon. So, right. uh, yeah, he's just qualifying I, all over the place. I also want to point out that even though the foreigners are invited players, they're also invited based on merit. Um, for example, Dog had a really strong showing in the beginning of the year. Surrender is the best performing Korea player in Korean leagues. And Tom is one of the only players to win two separate two separate major lands in both Assembly and Onog within the span of one a month one month period. Yeah, we're not uh, they're they're not inviting you know streamers and casters here. Uh, they're inviting players based on their merits. Uh, we did have some invites to the qualifiers uh, who were kind of streamers and casters in the Chinese community, and not surprisingly, all of them lost. So there's no you know streamers or casters here that qualified. Mm -hmm. All right. Unfortunately, still a bit of lag here. Um, although I will say, do you think this hand from Blue is better or worse than the one last time? Um, I think it's a bit worse just by considering the Hellfire alone. Um, you just want that. Re just like right now, he's just kind of vulnerable, right? 
Um, I don't think he's going to play. I don't think he's going to tap here. Uh, he's either going to play the Imp King boss or the uh, Twilight Drake goes with the Imp King boss. He's going to be playing out his minions from now on, but he's not going to be tapping uh, because that wouldn't make much sense. He wants to kind of gain control of the board, but he's it's just kind of vulnerable, right? You don't have the ability to deal with um, any patrons that might be coming out. But that said, you know, as long as nothing crazy comes up for your opponent, you should be okay. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting that you say this hand is better because the other hand, even though it had a lot of answers, it didn't really have a lot of minions he could play. Although he was able to coin out arena or uh, coin out an emperor through Zane on turn five. But I guess it just doesn't really matter as much in the matchup. Yeah, uh, you you definitely want those answers to be able to deal with your opponent's threats. Um, oh, never never mind. But there, yeah, there's, there's the Emperor. He's able to get this pretty big uh, Drake out here. 4-9 is about as big as you can reasonably expect. And uh, yeah, it gets the, probably the coin Thoris in next turn, which will lead to some pretty uh, powerful turns coming up. Zoro has basically nothing to do here other yeah. than maybe execute. Um, yeah, even though I would say Blue's hand is either slightly worse or comparable to his hand in the last game, I think Zoro's hand is significantly worse. He's not going to be able to get a really good battle rage until maybe turn 7 or so. Yeah, so I think this is honestly pretty fair because uh, both of them had good hands last game and uh, this game Blue doesn't have any answers but he has his own threats. So overall, um, I think Blue probably had the advantage in either game. Uh, definitely has the advantage in this game, and yeah, we will see uh, how this plays out. But Zoro obviously not too happy. Keep in mind, both of these players lost three games to one in their initial uh, match against Firebat and Life Coach, respectively. So they really want to get a win here. Particularly Zoro, you know, he's a prideful guy. Got to BlizzCon and everything, and so to see him kind of, you know, really struggling right here is uh, kind of diff hard to to look at. Hmm. Are, you, are you surprised there with uh, no Emperor here on this turn? It kind of makes sense. Um, you're playing on Curve, quote-unquote. Obviously, you know, Thorison helps you play even more on Curve. You can go Thorison and the Dr. Boom or something like that. But uh, this kind of guarantees that your guys stay on the board. I mean, maybe Zoro uses a six-man execute, but uh, that's all. And so... Blue is likely looking at you know an uncontested four nine plus double five fives next turn, so I think uh, it kind of makes sense from that perspective. Yeah, kind of. This hurts a lot for Zoro because he was able to do this play last turn, but now he's just taking an extra four damage. Maybe he wanted to take the extra damage though, considering that battle rage. Well, yeah, that's actually a pretty good point. But uh, definitely don't, doesn't want to be taking all this damage, unfortunately. Blue, yeah, maybe it's going a little overboard, perhaps. Yeah, Blue looks like he's not going to even need the Reno Jackson. Maybe for BM, but uh, other than that, it's looking pretty one-sided here. I mean, yeah. this uh, Dr. Boom does do, do some stuff, so there is that. But uh... I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure a BGH is on the other end of this mortal coil. <laughs> Yeah, just a delayed BGH, right? That's that's obviously uh, his battle cry. But, uh, I mean, worst case scenario, he can just siphon soul and then hit face for another 10. It's pretty good. Oh, well. Pretty you... bad boom bots, I would have to say. Yeah, you can also play your own uh, Dr. Boom. You're not in, in danger of dying. Yeah, he's like, I'm going face no matter what. I don't know if I'm going to answer this. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to play my own threat, but I know that I'm going face... I think I like clearing the Dr. Boom here. Um, it's less vulnerable to your opponent's BGH, and it just feels like your board is probably strong enough to deal with whatever your opponent can bring. Um, you're also, I guess, maybe playing a bit around Brawl, which you don't know your opponent has or doesn't have. Yeah, basically the only reason why you wouldn't Siphon Soul here is if you want to save it for a minion in the oh. future. Um, but this is one of, the, one of the biggest minions you're going to face other than Grom. Right, so even if your opponent groms in the next turn, you have a pretty easy way to deal with that. Ooh, Death Spite. Yeah. Uh, he, he really would have liked that um, on turn 4, for instance. Death Spite, not only just it's a great weapon to clear minions on turn 4, but also you need that effect, that whirlwind effect, to set up a battle rage, which is really what fuels you 
going into these turns. And now, unfortunately, he's playing from behind every single turn. Not really a situation that I, I think uh, the tempo deck that Patron has become can deal with. Yeah, I mean, it, that's that's exactly what's uh, exactly a perfect way to put it, right? Uh, tempo, or sorry, Patron has become a tempo deck. So to be this far behind in tempo against a deck that's supposed to be playing defensively, but you know, given the time they can play their bombs, it's just a horrible position. He doesn't really have the time to play the Despite here to set up future turns. He just has to kind of go for this play, which I don't know what that accomplishes, but it's something, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it's going to have to just face tank this. Doesn't have the Menzi even uh, hero power here. And uh, I believe that's game with the Jaraxxus. Yep. Yeah. Funny thing here, Jaraxxus for lethal. For uh, seven mana. It has, has mana to coin hero power, too, if he wants it. All right, so okay. It's not going to get the opportunity, unfortunately. All right, so, yeah, Concede comes out of Zoro before he can be finished off. That's going to be 1-0 for Blue. Not too surprising, considering that matchup. Uh, he does have remaining, though, his kind of bizarre Control Shaman, as well as his Face Hunter, and uh, Zoro has remaining his Warrior, Rogue, and Priest. So Yeah. I'm definitely most excited to see that mid-range Shaman, and uh, yeah, I think I'm going to get my wish here. Yep, it comes out, and uh, importantly, Harrison Jones comes out, which can, uh, I think, yeah. <laughs> he was, yeah. I was like, how do you throw yeah. that away against a patron warrior? But uh, Yeah, he, he didn't really put, he probably yeah. didn't put much thought into that. He's like, ah, oh, Harrison Jones, I guess I just have to keep it here and here and now. Yeah, Shaman does have a reasonable job or reasonable chance against a uh, patron, even without this Harrison Jones, just because it you know has Lightning Storm, one of the ways that you can actually clear patrons. Um, interestingly enough, this matchup, uh, even when patron was you know the strongest or one of the strongest decks out there, depending on who you ask, um, pre nerf, uh, it's I mean Shaman was the weakest deck then as well, and Shaman actually didn't have too bad of a matchup against patron because uh, it had some of the tools necessary to deal with it, and Patron sometimes had to resort to kind of OTK the opponent uh, in right. the end. If you ask Ping Ping Ho, the uh, Shaman Master himself, he'd actually say that Shaman is favored against the old school Patron Warrior. Mm -hmm. And he, he, to he tells us that he brought Patron Warrior to BlizzCon, or he brought um, Midrange Shaman to the qualifiers at BlizzCon um, just to counter Patron Warrior. And a lot of the players I talked to at BlizzCon thought that was ridiculous, but I guess it worked for him. It depends on what you tech into it. Um, as we see, the hex onto the Armorsmith. I was, I was kind of looking at my notes, and I look up, there's a hex. There's a froggy. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, that's interesting. I guess it sets up for future turns, so he doesn't have a four, uh, turn four play in hand at the moment. Um, he does have B... Or, sorry, speaking of blue, he does have BGH for bigger guys later, uh, which is what you normally hex. But, um, yeah, I mean, just in my normal experience, I did play a lot of uh, patient pre-nerf and played a decent amount uh, post-nerf as well. And Shaman, it was a, kind of a difficult deck because, you know, if you get your patrons out on turn 7, for instance, which is a bit late, but, you know, cons assuming you don't have, you know, the perfect hand, they can do things like Drake Lightning Storm to guarantee clear your board. And uh, they can, mm -hmm. they just have this presence the entire time. And eventually you kind of had to just uh, OTK them, or had to. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, well, here's the thing with um, not only this this deck have two lightning storms, it also has four lightning storms because the there's a huge potential for you to get either lightning storm or elemental destruction from jeweled scarabs, which mm -hmm. is a two of in this deck. Yeah, and that we see the uh, the differences coming out with the legal explorers there. Um, so blue kind of taking a beating early on, uh, not to his face, but I guess to his board. Finally able to put up a minion. That's kind of the downside, obviously, of keeping that Harrison Jones in hand. But uh, despite how this has worked out, I think it's still pretty much worth it for him to have kept that card. Yeah, this Sludge Belcher is actually absurdly annoying for Zoro. Yeah, the, the biggest um, thing here is Zoro doesn't have any way to... Like, if that uh, world was instead of Patron, he kind of just wins the game. But instead, he draws a dud. So now it's not working out too well. Uh, maybe Zoro now is kind of regretting putting the unstable goal on the field. 
It's more oh. of like a hindrance here almost. He can use it, yeah. It looks like he's gonna enrage his cruel task here. Um just so that his uh shredder doesn't die. Um yeah, he's gonna be able to clear this without being able to without needing to pop a shredder. Uh but that will give Blue kind of the ability to kill off the first half of the Shredder with his Fire Elemental. I mean, he was able to do that regardless, but there's not much of a board left for Zoro. Let's go for that. And nothing to do for Zoro in hand at the moment. Still one turn off of Dr. Boom. Picks up the Enormous Adventure, which is a pretty big draw for him, at least to be able to do something. Uh, though I pref he probably would have preferred that Deathbite. Right. Deathbite again is going to be a double edged sword here. Harrison Jones is going to come to effect and it's going to hurt him quite a bit. Um, although we probably will see Dr. Boom coming on turn 7. And now, uh, even though Blue was taking a beating in the first few turns, it, he's kind of wrestled back board advantage, especially with Dr. Boom possibly or probably even coming out because it's turn 7. Yeah, I mean, um, Patient Warrior it, isn't... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, either way, Zora is kind of going to get wrecked here, either by Harrison or BGH, two of the swing cards from Blue. And like you were saying, Blue might have built the stack in order to just uh, sneak a win in with these swing cards. Yeah, definitely. Look, so many uh, tech cards in here, and uh, after this, just, just a bunch of big threats, like you see uh, the Neptulon in hand. So, um, what was I going to say? Um, oh yeah, so I mean, Zoro obviously had that early lead with kind of the smaller minions, but you know, Patron isn't really built to kill your opponent very fast with small minions. Obviously, you can get things like big frothings, but you're not going to get repetitive damage like you would um, with you know a more aggressive deck. So it just even though he had that advantage, it kind of just ended up being in, uh, turning into card disadvantage because they all just threw, went into that sludge vulture. Right, um, sludge vulture was kind of like a three for one. Um, it ate. Um, it ate an it, like an inner rage, a cruel taskmaster, an unstable ghoul, and part of the piloted shredder. Yeah, it was crazy the, sick value. Yeah, the shredder ended up getting kind of finished off by the uh, fire elemental anyway. But you know, even the damage on the armor smith was pretty annoying. Um, I mean, Zoro sitting there at at forty four health, but uh, yeah, looking like it's an uphill battle for him <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Ooh, so close. <laughs> that Boombot was so close to being a hero, but unfortunately not. So yeah, Blue's just gonna fill up the board here. Uh there's almost certainly no brawl in Zoro's deck. Though we I've seen brawls in Chinese uh Patron Warriors before. Um did wait, did you catch it by the way? By any chance? I uh, catch what? If there's brawl a brawl somehow. Oh, no, I, I didn't, but I don't believe there's one because it probably would have stuck out. Mm. Yeah, these days, I think because Patron is such a tempo deck, it's much less likely for there to be a Brawl. Um, I think Brawl in previous Patron war uh, Warriors, where Patron Warrior was kind of like a common deck, was in there just to like kind of stall for time, especially against Handlock, um, sometimes against Druid as well. Um, where you could just like stall until you got the combo and went from there. Whereas these days, it's more of I need to take control of the board early, I need to keep control of the board, and I need to win with that. Yeah. Which doesn't really fall into the game plan um, if you add Brawl into the deck. Wow, <laughs> that card quality off of the Neptulon is pretty good. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Blue is really taking control of the game now. Uh, Zoro has nothing to deal with this Neptulon in hand. Not to mention the double old Murkai and Murloc Knight that Blue got off of that. Uh, the Colette Oracle, probably a dead card, doesn't want to be giving his opponent cards anytime soon. But uh, other than that, that is huge card value. And on top of that, he even has you know the Healing Wave if he ever gets in trouble. So this is looking really, really bad for Zoro. Yeah, it's kind of not so slow of a death here, even though he's at essentially 50 HP. He's going to die over the course of three turns, I want to say. I mean, there's a nine attack creature on the field. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wonder if Blue even totems here. I don't think he even totems, honestly. Just, uh, you don't even want your board to get filled. Surprised he attacked instead of committing to something like, uh... Or thinking about whether he wanted to defend a Vargas. But it doesn't really matter. That's... Just play the old Merc, I suppose. 
That's definitely bad placement, right? He could have gotten two more damage in, or did he really want to activate his healing totem that much? Um, yeah, at the very least, I would put him on the left side, right? Uh, just to have two things that uh, right. you can hop. But, um, yeah. At this point, maybe he's an autopilot. Maybe, maybe, I mean, it could be the case that, you know, we saw him kind of concede really quickly uh, against Life Coach earlier, so maybe he's just kind of uh, going through the motions and just playing. Uh, in this particular game, he's more or less won already, so maybe he's just like, ah, oh, whatever, this seems like a good place. I can't really yeah, see it's... any tactical reason for, it to putting, for putting it there. Right, it's... Uh, yeah, like you said, honestly, Zoro, really no chance of winning. If it were the old patron... Against this type of board, I'd be like, okay, Blue, you, you have to like play pretty carefully or you're just going to lose to uh, good old Warsong, Frothing Berserker, Whirlwind, Whirlwind, Unstable Ghoul, Grim Patron, that kind of combo. Yep, look, sorry for, again, for a bit of a pause here as we kind of get through it together, the, the, uh, the stream and us. <laughs> anyway, so Zoro really nothing to do, just gonna armor pass. It's basically, as we see these here come into hand, and uh, Blue just kind of able to keep hitting the face and eventually get lethal this way. I mean, there isn't any sort of crazy Earth Shock, his own to or healing totem lethal, is there? No, it's just too much damage. He might be able to do that next turn, though, potentially. Or shock your own healing totem, hit with right, the and totem, and then like Murkai or something. But uh, looks like Zoro's finally gonna do something, and it's <laughs> not gonna do be that much. And I believe there's a, a kind of an off the wall lethal here, right? With the uh, with the or shock your own totem plus crackle plus uh, Murkai charging yeah. in. Yeah, so it's. I honestly think it's enough without that kind of lethal, but it would get you like two more damage about. Right, so Earth Shock is just lethal here. Yeah. If you Earth Shock your own healing totem. Oh, he's wait. missing it. Okay. Aww. Uh, oh. It's a little disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually Earth Shock right. your own uh, spell damage totem. Oh, he's going to do it this. Okay. Looks like he found it. But he didn't attack with the. Oh, well. Yeah, I guess it works anyway. I guess it doesn't matter. Anyway, we we wanted to watch the Earth Shock on your own totem. And that's the, that's an old trick with Shaman that you don't really see much very often because you don't see Shaman very often. Uh, right, and <laughs> even if you do see Shaman, Earth Shock is a pretty uncommon card. Yeah, just so many more aggressive decks these days. In any case, uh, Blue's Shaman deck works out really well there. Able to take out the Patron Warrior. And strangely enough, the kind of... The oddball decks, you know, the Reno Warlock, the uh, Control Shaman, are winning against the tried and true uh, Patron Warrior. It's a new yeah, deck, I... it's a new-ish deck, obviously, because, you know, since the nerf, uh, it's a bit different. But, um, yeah, not working out too well for Zoro. Gonna switch it up, gonna go with that uh, Priest to kind of pick up a win, any wins he can get. And I'm gonna right. be the Hunter, the Face Hunter for Blue. Yeah, this is, uh, I want to say, a god-awful matchup for Blue. Um, I think... Dragon Priest is one of the best decks you could go for against Phase Hunter. It's just all their minions trade so well against all the Phase Hunter minions. Like a 2 4 taunt on turn 2 seems to be like the anti, um, anti Hunter card, the anti Phase Hunter card. It just deals so well with everything. Yeah, definitely. And uh, looking forward, I mean, as we, again, sorry about uh, the pause here, uh, but we, we have this. Uh, Dragon Priest, which does pretty well against Face Hunter. We also have the uh, Patient Warrior, which does well as well. So it could come down to whether Rogue can beat the Face Hunter. Yeah. So, pretty good point. Um, yeah, like we said, 2 4 taunt. All right, let's see what you can do. Yeah, Brave Archer is not going to be able to do much here, though he does have a way to get through it at least with the uh, quick shot there. And the one thing though that the one thing going for the face hunter that I found in this matchup is that if you're able to get significant damage to the face, then the dragon priest typically has holy nova and their hero power and that's it. Um, so that's the that's the biggest thing going. 
for uh, the priest, I believe, right here. Or sorry, for the for the hunter, is that you just kind of want to get uh, the damage in, and they can't get themselves out of it. Yeah, well, the other thing Blue had going for him is that he rolled a Misha. Definitely by far the best uh, the best thing he could have gotten. Zero once again gets that 2-4 taunt. Like we said, the best minion you can have against Face Hunter. Um, it's not going to trade well against Misha, but I think it's going to be enough. I would have really liked to see the Northshire Cleric on this turn as well, just to get a bit more on the board. Yeah, just to put stuff on the board, especially because obviously the Misha is likely to trade into this Wormrest Agent. Um, but uh, after that, I mean, the 1-1 one -one is not going to be able to trade into that Star Cultist, at least not on the board. Yeah, and with Zora's philosophy, it seems like he wants to prioritize healing face. Um, that just means that there's actually, like, it, you probably won't want to be drawing cards with the Northshire Cleric then if you prioritize healing face that much. So another, yet another reason just to play the Northshire in order to possibly contest the 1-1s one on the board. So because he didn't play it on this turn, he might have just only gotten a net 1 damage in um, with the heal. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. net one damage heal, rather. Yeah, so if he'd played the North Shard this turn, he would be at one health lower, but he would have a 1-2 um, against, um, and this 1-1 one, one would be dead, basically, which I think is a pretty good deal. I suppose he doesn't know what type of hunter he's going against quite yet, so maybe he feels like if he's going against a mid-range hunter, he needs to have the opportunity to draw cards at a future date. And I didn't want his Northshire Cleric to be um, to uh, get killed by some sort of removal. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. And there's not really any cards that are indicative of this being a Phase Hunter or a Hybrid Hunter. Um, you can't really tell much from Haunted Creeper or the Animal Companion, for instance. Yeah. Um, Blue is kind of in a rough spot here. He's drawn all of his bigger minions, which is good for him uh, as far as, you know, establishing a board presence, but from here on out he needs to find a way to deal damage. He's only done two, as you can see, and uh, I mean, he has a decent bit of damage in his hand, but uh, he's starting to trade, which is a bit odd, I believe. I mean, I think this is about the time when he needs to just start smorking it, right? Or you just keep trading as the, uh, as the phase hunter. Um, I also don't like this as much because you've already used Quick Shot early on, and you have even less opportunity for card draw. Also, all your other cards in your hand are just extremely clunky and uh, kind of just specific reactive cards. Yeah, I mean you're using all your damage basically to tr uh, to trade with your opponent's board, and uh, as we can see, Zoro has you know reasonable answers in hand. He has the Shadow Word Pain has the uh, Black Wing Corruptor that can deal, you know, with the board of blue. Ooh, another North Shard Cleric. So with this Brave Archer, do you think it's safe to say that this is either a hybrid hunter or a face hunter? Um, I mean, I saw his deck earlier. It topped out at Leroy. So, right, so I mean, I mean, from Zoro's perspective. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, you, no, it looks like Face Hunter now. Okay, at so, so I think yeah, so Zoro makes the call to play the Northshire Cleric here, whereas I don't think he he might have still decided to um, keep the Northshire if he didn't see the indication of like it's definitely um, Face Hunter or a Face-ish type of hunter. Yeah. Now he's not as worried as much about uh, getting value out of these cards. Do you think Blue will trade here? I hope not. <laughs> I mean, he's been trading the entire time. I don't think he can... He wow, he traded. Uh, I don't think he's ever going to win doing this. <laughs> I mean, these guys are doing one damage a turn. So, <laughs> I don't know. Well, North, uh, Cabal Shadow Priest. Cabal Shadow Priest can take that Master Swordsmith. <laughs> it seems pretty good. I mean, it's got a lot of health. It can trade into a lot of things. I mean, Blue's been holding on to that Master Swordsmith just like with his dear life. No, this guy's going to keep buffing my guys. You will not trade yeah, into him. This guy's going to carry me throughout the game. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't see how you can win this match with the amount of trading that Blue is doing. It's just kind of insane to me. 
Zoro has his hand on his head. He just needs to get wins here. That's why he's as stressed as he is. I think if uh, Zoro was, you know, already one match up, uh, he had already won a series, and you know, he was this. This was one to one. He'd be playing a lot faster. But he just like, can I just get a win here, please? That's why he seemed. You saw him took his. He saw him take his time there, and uh, decide whether or not he wanted to shadow word pain blue with nothing else to do finally anymore. Now he decides to go face, but uh, I think it's a little bit too little too late. All right, I might have considered just keeping the bow here, if uh, just to see if I can draw another trap later on. But uh, well, we see this is not something we don't see every day. Uh, Yasera being played on turn nine against a face hunter. I think if you can safely do that against face hunter. On turn 9, then it, you're probably in a good position. Yeah, I think <laughs> you've pretty much already won the game. Uh, this area is basically a victory cigar here for Zoro. Uh, it's not gonna... I mean... I will say, though, that this is probably one of the best turns you could get. Yeah, I mean, this is what I was referring to, right? I mean, even though we've said like Zoro is so far ahead, he's playing the Dragon Priest, he's playing as a face hunter, such a good matchup. If Blue just commits to hitting the face, he you can get the Priest down pretty far, and they have nothing to do except just, you know, their hero power. Um, so as you see right here. Uh, I wonder if Zoro will kind of commit to uh, racing his opponent here. Maybe just use the Swordsmith to, to trade. Because uh, he's... If he keeps trading here, I feel like... Or if he commits to trading, excuse me, then the game might go on too long, and he might eventually lose. Well, I think uh, it's probably smart to just like, count the damage on board right now because he can trade to a certain extent, but he has um, a potential of the Emerald Drake to follow up. Mm. So that just deals all, like a ton of damage uh, in the next few turns. So I think worst case scenario is if your Master Swordsmith buffs up the Twilight Drake and you think, oh, the Twilight Drake, or the, rather the Twilight Guardian might get silenced, uh, then it, it will guaranteed have two attack, plus the um, the 18 attack on board, so that's 23 damage. So you, I would probably try to attack with one of these minions and trade with my Ysera right now. Uh, looks like he's a little bit concerned about maybe getting something cleared. Uh, so goes with the double attack to face. No real risk of him dying, uh, I don't think, because Unleash doesn't really do anything because you have to trade before you play the Unleash to get full value. And uh, looks like Blue's going to go for another one of his quick concedes. I guess it wasn't too quick there. He was dead on board. But um, yeah, Zoro brings it back one of the games. Now he's only done one, or sorry, two games to one. And uh, his Priest is cleared. Every game matters, by the way, guys. Uh, after the overall series score that these guys have in the groups, it goes down to uh, individual game difference. So uh, even if Zoro believes he's going to end up losing 2-2 anyway, it's uh, worth it for him to get as many wins as possible before he goes out. Right, so to that extent, he's just queuing up with the best deck um, against his Fate Hunter as possible. And definitely one of the best decks is Patron Warrior. So... Um, like you mentioned, probably going to get a win with this Patron Warrior, and it's going to come down to the last decks, which is Face Hunter against Zoro's um, Rogue. Yeah, definitely. Although, uh, Blue has an okay hand here. He can uh, kind of deal with this. Uh, we see the Lothab. Uh, I said before that it uh, topped out at uh, Leroy, but maybe I misread uh, the deck. Well, let's see. Uh... Uh, in Chinese, I think Lotheb or like um, uh, Leroy is before Lotheb oh, okay. alphabetically, mm -hmm. so that's why you might have thought it topped at at Leroy Jenkins because they're both five mana, mm -hmm. and Leroy is um, before Lotheb. The funny thing about Leroy Jenkins is that it's a it's a name, right? So it doesn't really translate well into other languages. So it's not actually Leroy Jenkins in other languages. Um, in Chinese, it's Chicken Warrior. Or um, it's actually different in the Taiwanese version and the um, Chinese version. In one of them, it's Chicken Warrior, and in the other, it's Train King. Hmm. Yeah. So fun facts, fun facts by Monk. Very fun facts. Uh, as far as the Japanese version, uh, they basically just—I think they say just Nidoi. So. Ah, uh, that's 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 much more boring. 
<laughs> well, I mean, the Japanese version just came out last month, so they kind of had to make do with what they had as far as uh, transposing some stuff. Especially because a lot of the Japanese players were already familiar with the uh, English names anyway. Hmm. Anyway, um, so blue has a reasonable board here. Uh, somewhat threatening, even though it's only 4 damage, just because it's so annoying to get rid of all these cards. Uh, Zoro considering something. I uh, don't know yet what that is, but... Um, yeah. You know, the funny thing is that I found out through my stats of looking through Face Hunter versus uh, Patron Warrior is that, uh, well, not just Face Hunter, but all the other types of hunters, is that the faster the hunter is, the more of a chance they have against Patron Warrior because it's very possible for the Patron Warrior just to draw dead. Yeah, um, so, so, so that means, like, Face Hunter is actually better than mid range hunter. Or rather, Face Hunter is better than hybrid hunter, which is better than. Um, mid-range hunter against the um, the patron warriors. Yeah, I think I, I remember you mentioning that, and I, I definitely agree when watching or experiencing these matchups, just because it's so easy for the patron just to get the necessary answers for things like high main. Uh, execute just deals with it, and then if they have patrons on the board, uh, they deal with that as well. And if you ever give patron the time to get their patrons and you don't have a good answer for it, then you're just going to lose. Uh, just like some that typically the Druid loses in this matchup if they allow patrons to go up. Um, mm. Similar situation. This is a pretty interesting scenario for Zoro. Uh, and for Blue, for that instance. He's basically giving Zoro uh, the potential to race him with the Frothing Berserker. But maybe he's thinking, okay, so if I trade my Mad Scientist in next turn, even if I, if I run Freezing Trap or if I run Explosive Trap, um, both these scenarios pretty much shut off this Frothing Berserker, so he's just sacrificing the 7 damage to face, which I think will largely remain inconsequential. It's going to be up to Zoro later on to basically clear the board. Yeah, definitely. Racing, racing probably isn't a reliable strategy for Zoro, even though he can get a free 7 damage in. Yeah, it's it comes down to degrees, right? If you can have a huge guy that can hit the face, uh, then that's a different story, but 7 isn't quite enough damage to kind of race in this situation. Um, looks like it's going to be Acolyte and probably going to hit face here. I mean, obviously he's not going to be able to race that well, but at the same time it's not... I mean, Blue does have to trade here because he's eventually going to lose the race, so there's no real reason for Zoro to be trading into these minions in particular. Okay, Freezing Trap. So Blue did look at the trap, which means he probably runs more than one. Um, and uh, it's probably going to be something like Explosive and Freezing. Let's go ahead and clear the uh, everything but the Acolyte in the situation. Zero picks up the uh, Gnomish Inventor, which he's probably going to play now rather than play his Acolyte. Though he could play the Acolyte even for 5 mana just to force the Lothab to go into it. Mm -hmm. Or to force the uh, Quick Shot. Yeah, something like that. Basically just to uh, to uh, kind of heal. There's the Leroy Jenkins, by the way. He's immediately going to play it, actually, interestingly enough. Is he going to trade it all here? I mean, he's or been trading go all face? He's been trading a lot recently, so I would be surprised if he didn't trade. I, I think I would trade at least one in, just so there's no free kill for the whelps. Right. Uh, nope, oh, says nope. Go face. I okay. mean, he was kind of faking us out for a second there. Yeah. Ah, oh, but he gets punished. He gets punished by this armor smith. Yeah, that's definitely a punish. And even the, uh, the execute there. Um, well, okay. So, armor smith. Thing is, he can't armor smith plus slam and execute, so he'd have to trade in his 2 4 into something, unless he wanted to be really greedy. Wait, why can't he, uh, slam execute an armor smith? And he can't slam and execute armor smith and hero power, sorry. Right, okay. Um, so okay, yeah. so he can he can just uh armor smith execute and hero power here. That yeah. seems alright. You give up some of your board, but I think it's a fair trade to make. Yeah, especially because these are probably the biggest minions you're ever gonna face from here on out, especially considering you've seen Brave Archer. <laughs> But, Brave uh, Archer, one of the scariest cards in your 
of cards in your opponent's deck right now. I mean, what I'm saying is you're not going to see... Uh, I mean, you're probably not going to see any high mains in the future, so... Um, you're fine just kind of getting rid of your mains. Looks like he's going to just forgo armoring up or hero powering. And uh, that's kind of scary, to be honest. Uh, because blue, I mean, he can push a decent amount of damage here. See, the, the problem here is you kind of want to use Quick Shot here to kill off the Armorsmith. But if you do that, you don't fit in a hero power. So this Armorsmith on this turn essentially is going to gain Zoro four effective health or uh, four effective armor because um, not only is it going to get two armor from the quick shot and the um, and the minion, but it's also just going to um, absorb the quick shot. On the other hand, there's actually a possibility that you just trade all four of these minions in and use the hero power. But Or you could just a, go face. <laughs> yeah, I guess a completely different line of play here. Well, um, if he if he just quick shots now, it's kind of a misplay. Since you don't know if there's any shield slams in this deck, I guess. Where when you've seen at least one shield block. Yeah, true. You weren't get yeah. You don't know for certain if there's uh, shield slams or not. Uh, but it's good. It's fair to assume that there's there's none in there, especially because it's it's hard to fit shield slam in uh, recent iterations of patron. Sorry again about the uh, frozen screen here, guys. Uh, we are again uh, piggybacking off of the Chinese screen to bring this to you. Uh, so sorry about the the uh, pockets of lag. I will say that uh, potentially make this experience a bit worse. But it's going to end up uh, taking care of the armor smith, and yeah, he does pick up a, a pallet shredder. But other than that, I mean, he. Doesn't get that much damage to the face, which is unfortunate for him. Cruel Taskmaster, Death Spite. They're both pretty okay draws. Yeah, I think he just goes for the Cruel Taskmaster here, though, just so he can fit it in armor up. Um, and... and Well, not only that, but he um, has the potential for more Battle Rage draws in future turns by getting more minions on the field. And I think you would expect this bad scientist even to go for face here. Um, I think Zoro might actually trade into the mad scientist just to uh, mitigate some of the damage. Um, obviously, hitting the hound is kind of worth it as well. How many kill commands have we seen this game? Do you know? Uh, very few. Either zero or one. Do you remember if Zoro actually kill commanded anything, or rather, if Blue actually kill commanded anything? I remember last game, but all the games are kind of blending in for me at this point. <laughs> yeah, there there have been quite a few hunter games here. Yeah. Um, did we get to see what that secret was? I was uh I yeah. <laughs> well, uh we'll have to find out in the future. Uh in any well, case well, sorry? It, it'll keep up the suspense because we'll find out at the same time that Zero does. All right, and uh, he pretty much has to find out right now because you can't just sit there. Uh, this isn't one of those situations where you can kind of wait and uh, you know be patient, and not proc the trap. You kind of have to proc it right now, mm. even if you think it's snakes, or even if you suspect it could be snakes. Oh well, there's also the possibility that uh, e even if you do proc the trap and it's snakes. You could go for Battle Rage into Death Spite into Fire War X and clear off the snakes. Right, right. Or just a simple Battle Rage into Whirlwind. So Zora was able to attack, which means it's most likely explosive. Small chance that it's bare, but uh, yeah, probably not the case. You know, you know, Asian players actually do like bear quite a bit. Um, Kranich brought Bear Trap to BlizzCon even. Bear Trap and Snakes, I believe, or, or Bear Trap and Explosive. Mm -hmm. And also, um, a lot of the Korean players just generally like Bear Trap as one of the, like, the core traps in their decks. I don't know if it necessarily translates into the Chinese scene, um, but probably more of a possibility there. 
than uh, Western players using Bear Trap because it's kind of like regarded as not that great of a card in the Western scene. Yeah, you see it here and there on ladder, but as far as the top pros, not something you t typically see that often. Looks like Blue with nothing else to do. Finally going to go for this Unleash uh, with the Knife Juggler. And uh, let's see, how much damage is it going to be? He kind of wants this to hit face, actually, <laughs> these knives. Um, all right, so... I think that, that was pretty good because yeah. it uh, denies him a free trade with the Knife Juggler. Yeah, that was actually pro probably perfect, right? You get one to the face, one to <clears throat> the two one. And Zoro at four life. Can he, I mean, it's kind of hard for him to, just to stay alive here. I mean, on board. What can he even do here? I'm not really sure. Um, he can draw for one. Uh, if he wants to go that route, looks yeah, it looks like he's going for that because I think he's dead. Otherwise, um, obviously there's a doomsayer thing, but then you you end up giving your opponent um, a knife as well, which is a problem. Whirlwind's a start. It's a really good start. He wishes he had Whirlwind before, though, because he could have enraged the Knife Juggler. Fireworks is not really going to help either. The ordering of these cards is just really poor for Zoro, because if he had Fireworks earlier, he could have used uh, Despite plus the Fireworks. If he had the Knife Whirlwind earlier, he could have done that earlier as well. Um, picks up a card. Looks like he's just dead. Yeah, there's nothing else for him to do, so that is going to be game. He's going to concede. Well... Yeah. Unfortunately, Patron Warrior fails for Zoro, and we don't even get to see his rogue deck. Zoro got a 3 0'd because his Patron Warrior just failed three times in a row. Um, some of them against pretty good matchups, like especially against the Hunter. But like we said, if Patron Warrior just, just doesn't draw that well, then games like this can happen where the Hunter just takes or just runs away with it. Um, not only that, but we have to remind ourselves that it's it's not really a traditional face hunter. It had a lot of mid-range creatures, which definitely improves the win rate um, of the hunter by quite a bit against Warrior. Yeah, just having those annoying creatures that, um, in the end, you know, Zora wasn't able to deal with uh, made a huge difference. And uh, yeah, that's end up going to be three games to one for Blue over Zero or over Zoro, excuse me. And uh, just to recap you on the scores, Firebat beat Zoro 3-1, to one. Life Coach beat Blue 3-1, to one. Uh, Firebat beat Life Coach 3-2, to two. Le and now Blue beat Zoro 3 games to 1. So Zoro is 0-2, Blue is 1-1, one one. Life Coach is 1-1, one and, one, and Firebat is 2-0. And, zero. and uh, I believe Life Coach has, he's plus 1, he has, he's one better game over, no, no, Blue has a better no, Life Coach is a better score. Yeah. So Blue is 3 and 1 and 1 and 3. And Life Coach is 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 as far as our game. So Life Coach is currently in second place. And uh, our next game is going.